momentum was on their side. They were talking domination up front. Now, we've been to a lot of stadiums, and a lot of stadiums claim to be the 12th man, but I have never been in a stadium this loud. Oxen Stadium has completely turned this Oregon Duck team around. Well, that and the fast-paced offense, because the Cal defense was sucking wins. They were really exhausted at the end of that thing. And this will be Luke Bellotti to kick off for Oregon. Remember, they've either squibbed it or pooched it. They've yet to kick deep to California. And this one will be along the ground as well. Tough hop there at the 30. Ball picked up by Brian Holly, a backup fullback. Well, last time the Cal Bears played here at Autzen, the game went into overtime. Quarterback sophomore Dennis Dixon it's Demetrius Williams that gave Oregon a 7 nothing lead then Cal running back Marshawn Lynch ripped off this 52 yarder to send the game in overtime and that was the winner Brady Lee hitting James Finley for the touchdown Ducks won that one 27 to 20. Nate Longshore missed an opportunity after the turnover he missed a wide open Jackson in the end zone he needs something here now he fakes to Jackson now he takes it himself and he gets about five or six yards. Not sure that one was drawn up in the playbook, though, Tim. <laughs> I'll guarantee it wasn't. You know, he always jokes about his mobility. And he did have a big run in a game we did last year against UCLA where he picked up 17. But for the most part, he's not a mobile quarterback. He gets by with what he does. Like right there, it's a pretty good game. But that was a broken play. He got six yards on that one. Four sets the tailback. Longshore to throw too high almost intercepted almost intercepted Looked like Jerome Boyd was in the throwing lane there check it that's Patrick Chung number 15 not 13 and, and Robert Jordan didn't know who he was throwing to Jackson will sit behind Jordan they were both in the same area woefully underthrown if it was to Jackson and if it was to Jordan it was overthrown and to Chung, it was just a dropped interception. Brings up this third down and four. Lavelle Hawkins back in the game at the bottom of the screen. Here's Longshore with time to throw. And he's got Jackson first down California at the 44, 46 yard line. And that brings a smile on the face of Jackson. But again, Longshore buying time didn't step into the throw but it shows you the strength of his arm and how about the catch it looked like this ball was going to fly out of bounds Jackson goes up high pulls it down and gets the one foot in he looks like a pro receiver right now well is he smooth for set the tailback Zach Smith the fullback first and ten California Longshore to Hawkins too far double covered that time Matthew Harper and Jarris Bird and Longshore is down flat on his back and if he can't continue that means redshirt freshman Kevin Riley from Beaverton Oregon well he got hit very low at right after he released the ball I couldn't see who hit him but somebody went to their knees and then dove at his legs here it is. Now the ball's gone. Look at this. Down at his legs. And he gets. Boy, that's uh, that's scary. Yeah. It's your uh, worst nightmare as a quarterback standing in the pocket. Kwame Ajiman, number 30. Not intentionally injuring the quarterback, but this is Kevin Riley, who's had limited action this season. In fact, he's thrown three passes yet to complete one. He's a red shirt freshman. about that from Oregon coming in if they if he came in what a dream that would be for him but let's just hope Longshore is okay took that right on his right thigh and he'll test it as he gets up off the turf here at Autzen Stadium he's coming out you know Kevin Riley is pretty good ball player here in the state of Oregon he was the uh, top player 
in the state as a senior rated by rivals.com and the Gatorade player of the year in 05. Yeah, but it, I tell you he what, he steps the, into a real situation here, huh, Tim? Well, the crowd saw Longshore go out and saw Riley come in, so they're going to make it as tough as they can on the freshman. And he'll face a second down and 10 from the Cal 46 yard line. Gives the four set. And for set, maybe a yard. And for Riley, that's going to bring up a passing down at third down and 10. Oregon brings in their speed rusher as Longshore gets his ankle wrapped on the sidelines. He was holding his right thigh. I guess he twisted his ankle a little bit. They're reinforcing that. Will to Kwafu. Jeremy Gibbs at defensive ends to add pressure for Kevin Riley. Deshaun Jackson will line up at the top of the screen. Third and nine. Forsett's got, Forsett's got it, and Nick Reed's got Forsett. And that's just bringing Kevin Riley off the bench. They aren't going to have him throw and have the opportunity to throw an interception in a passing situation. So they just play conservatively. They're going to let their defense try to take this thing over before Longshore can get back in the game. Now Andrew Larson will punt this one to NDL Brown standing at his 15 yard line. Oregon will rush four setting up for a possible return by Brown who's got a 64 yarder this season. Angling it to the far side. Brown's going to get it at about the 10. He's going to go down right there. Well, tomorrow it's the third race in the chase for the NASCAR Next Tell Cup. Who can begin to break away from the crowd? Jimmy Johnson's on the pole leading the way. It's time now to separate the contenders from the pretenders. Catch all the championship drama at Kansas. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern with the NASCAR countdown tomorrow on ABC. Dan the good news is Nate Longshore is up. He's warming up. He's trying to put some pressure on that right leg. You can see it's heavily taped. Yeah he's a quarterback that relies heavily on his right leg for pushing off and delivering the passes. That'll be a tough one for him. But here's Dixon now first and ten for Oregon. He's got time to throw across the middle intercepted intercepted at the 20 yard line. Dixon's Anthony Felder with the pick Dixon's first interception of the year couldn't have come at a worse time. Talked about it at the top 11 touchdowns no interceptions when this game started. This is his first really passing mistake of the year. They had over under coverage just basically a zone the linebacker was in the passing lane and he threw it anyway and Longshore is going to be the quarterback. Anthony Felder the junior from Seattle Washington with his first career interception and he could not have helped out his team anymore. Boy Longshore struggling on the field though. Yeah he but he's, got, he's got Justin Forsett behind him and they're in field goal range already. That's Mora in motion. There's Forsett cutting back over the middle inside the 15 yard line. Patrick Chung had to stop him there. Longshore is really gimpy on that leg. You're right, though. 4.05 to play. Clock continues to move. This you want to melt it and get the points out of this drive. This is where you tell the offensive line. You point each one of those big five guys up there and you say, ball game's in your hands, fellas. We're going to run the ball. We're going to try to get in the end zone, but if we don't, we're going to take time off the clock and bring out the field goal kicker. Forsett left side cuts back inside the 10 the 5 Forsett is down to the one yard line. You know we don't talk about Justin Forsett enough. Tedford says he reminds him of Barry Sanders. He's got some Barry Sanders type moves. Got those strong legs. Finds the hole great eyes. This was a nice cutback but what a hole opened up by that offensive line. Bella Puente, Mac, and Malele are really playing well up front. Yeah, and now if you're Oregon, just let them score. Don't wait, take any more time off the clock, or else start using your timeouts if Cal doesn't get in on this play, because they're just going to milk this clock. 
Here's Forsett. Touchdown, California. Yeah, I don't think they were trying to let him score, but you're right. That's probably the best thing for him. Because you know you're sure to get points down there. Of course, if you're playing defense, you're still thinking turnover or something. Moot point now. 30-24. Bears. Here's Jordan K. Big extra point here for Car for Gay K, and he's got it. And in that drive, Forsett goes over 100 yards for the day. So you've got Forsett with 103 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Jackson with 11 catches and a couple of touchdowns, and those are your different makers. Give it to the offensive line again. I just can't emphasize enough. When you have a rusher running for over 100 yards and a quarterback that's only been sacked one time when he's thrown the ball 40 times, that's a pretty good day for the O line. Well, near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevy player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. We've got a Quite a few candidates for that award today. Before Dennis Dixon threw that interception in the last series, he had gone with 135 attempts this season without throwing a pick. And that wasn't a good one. Not only was it ill advised and ill timed, led to the touchdown, but it was just a bad read. Still has plenty of time though with 311 to play. Well, and Oregon has their horses back to return this one. Jeremiah Johnson, Jonathan Stewart, and Andre Crenshaw. And Kay will kick the ball along the ground. This is Jonathan Stewart at the 30. And he's wrapped up at about the 32 yard line. Again, it's Javid Best wearing number 14 with that tackle. So three timeouts for Oregon as you can see the little yellow lines under the name Oregon indicates the timeouts remaining Cal with two. Plenty of time as you said all the timeouts no reason for panic here you're playing at home you still have the advantage as far as that goes playing at home but cannot panic here. Jeremiah Johnson comes out with Dennis Dixon he'll be the running back for this series of plays. Dixon fires he's got his man that's Ed Dixon the tight end continuing to have a huge day for his quarterback Dennis Dixon. You talked about going overtime the last time these two played at Austin and Cal hadn't won here since 1987. We may be headed back to overtime. That wouldn't bother me a bit my friend. Now this ball well was well thrown. And Dixon's having a very nice day at tight end 19 yard gain there he's got six catches this afternoon. Dixon over the middle to Jeremiah Johnson. He spins down to the 40 yard line. Dan, in the last drive that Oregon scored, they did this up tempo. Cal's defense was really visibly fatigued. And they're again putting their hands on their hips and they're already tired out on this drive, it looks like. Now the big guys up front, just three men will rush the passer now. Jonathan Stewart at the 30. Jonathan Stewart at the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 17 yard line. That's a worn out defensive line as Stewart rips off 23 yards. Very methodical. They want to get him on the perimeter. They want to get him against the defensive backs who they don't think can make the tackle. And if you look what happens out here, they get one on one right here against the defensive back. And he can't make the tackle. You've got to go on him high. They got him on the perimeter, one on one. Dixon. And the ball's intercepted. Tyson Alou Alou caught the deflection. California gets a huge break. Alou Alou Aye. That's a gift. Tip drill. 
every day at practice. Cal practices not only the tip drill, but the rip drill. And if the defense in practice gets three turnovers, they don't have to do conditioning drills. Now, Mika Connie tipped the ball up in the air. And Tyson Alu Alu grabbed it. He jumped into this rotation as a freshman. That's his biggest play in two years. Longshore gives to four set, and he's tackled in the backfield by Kwame Ajman. Oregon's got to start thinking about burning timeouts, and they do. With 2.10 to go, they use their first. Time permitting, stay tuned after the game for the Dell Post Game Report. Reese Davis, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. They're standing by to bring us all of today's scores and highlights. That's coming up next. Big play by Alua Lu. Jumped into the defensive line rotation last year. Signed with Cal before the 2005 season and enrolled in 2006. But that's his biggest play. That could be a showstopper right there. You go back to Nate Longshore's problem with his right ankle. That's the same ankle he broke against Sacramento State a couple of years ago in his very first game as quarterback for the Golden Bears. I thought his thigh was going to be more of a problem when I saw it because the hit actually came to his thigh and then they actually fell down. It didn't look like he went awkwardly, but boy, he's got that thing wrapped now. Here it is again. The hit comes right at about the thigh, but then it came down on the ankle. And immediately, that's when Longshore started reaching for it. He knew he had a problem. Todd, you got more? Yeah, Dan, the problem, as you pointed out, that is a surgically repaired ankle that he broke two years ago, and he's not the most mobile quarterback. He's even less mobile now. He is wincing every time he has to push off that. And there's Forsett ripped down in the backfield again by Kwame Ajman. Timeout, Oregon. So quickly, two negative plays for Cal. Two timeouts taken by Oregon. Brings up a huge third down. Third and 12, and so it looks like if they can make the stop here, they should get good field position with enough time on the clock to get this thing into end, into uh, overtime. The question now for Cal, do you put Longshore in the shotgun and let him throw the ball, try to find somebody? And the other question is now, if you're Oregon, do you come after him knowing he can't avoid the pass rush or do you play back in a zone and try to pick him off I think you're right at both accounts as far as number one you put him in the shotgun and you let him throw as far as bringing the blitz I'm not positive about that I think you stay in that zone and I think you try to keep everything in front of you even if they get the first you want to continue to melt the clock you don't want any big plays here what do you think Todd I'll tell you what, Jeff Tedford was standing there watching Nate Longshore warm up after they wrapped the ankle, and he knows that Longshore cannot push off in the least on that right ankle, so that might be his hesitation about putting Longshore into that shotgun position. He's under center. James Montgomery is the tailback. Mora in motion. Third and 12. Montgomery's first carry. Out to the 30-yard line and not much more. So Oregon will not use a timeout here. Oh, yes, they will. So Oregon will burn their final timeout. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. And a change maker, the game breaker, Deshaun Jackson. How about the game he had? Everywhere. Just continues to find himself open. This out and up pattern was fantastic. 25-yard touchdown, 31-yard touchdown. Sensational day. 11 catches, two touchdowns. He's big time. Oregon led 10-3 at halftime, and since then, it's been the offensive fireworks show that we anticipated. Coming into today, Oregon had 15 of their 24 drives in less than two minutes. Yep, that's what they've got now as Andrew Larson will kick it away to Andy L. Brown. Brown standing at his 30-yard line. So the Ducks should get good field position. Nick Sundberg to snap it. Good snap. Again, kicked away from the return man. 
And Brown tells everybody to get out of the way as the ball rolls out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Good job by Andrew Larson, a 48 yard punt. And he still has a minute 45 to work with the sidelines and the chains to stop things. Tim, now here's our ESPNU All State standings review. SC up in Seattle tonight on Saturday Night Football on ABC. 5 o'clock Pacific time, 8 o'clock Eastern. How about West Virginia? How about Oklahoma? Jeez. Those two go down in defeat. Chance yes. for the winner of this game to really move up in the standings. Garen Strong is the receiver at the bottom of the screen. He's been quiet today. Dixon looks his way. And he gets up and then out of bounds. Heads up play by Garen Strong. Saving precious seconds off the clock. Yeah, the sideline's their best friend now, and if they go over the middle, just make sure that they're down 10 yards or beyond so they can stop the clock to move the chains. Still have plenty of time, 138 to go. And in a spread attack like this, they can use the entire field. No timeouts. Jonathan Stewart in the backfield with Dixon. Four-man rush. Stewart's got it. Stewart trying to get to the outside. He's got enough for the first down. That will stop the clock momentarily. We're trying to get extra yardage. He almost gave it back. 130 to play now as they move the chains. Jeremiah Johnson replaces Stewart in the backfield. Three wide receivers and the tight end, Ed Dixon, who's had a big day for Oregon. Dixon throws the ball away under pressure. That time California brought pressure. Eddie Young. Is one of the men, the linebacker, in on Dixon. And give a lot of credit to the linebacker, Tony Felder, because Anthony Felder dropped back in front of Ed Dixon, who was over the middle, and I think he was the intended receiver. Cameron Colvin coming to the near side of the field, along with Garen Strong. Three man rush this time for Cal. Dumps it off to Jeremiah Johnson. At the 35. Look out. Johnson coming left 40. 45 50. He's not done yet. He's out of bounds at the California 40 yard line. Jeremiah Johnson for 26 yards and a huge play for the Ducks. And I think Dixon was the intended receiver again, but he checked off Dixon, came down to Johnson. Johnson obviously better in the open field than is Dixon. 83 at the right of your screen. He was the intended. Comes off him, goes underneath to the safety valve. Now watch Johnson in the open field. Broke three tackles. He knows he's got the first down. Now he's biding time. Dixon, he's got strong, strong at the 35. Cart wheeled down there by Anthony Felder and Marcus Ezef. Clock still moving under 60 seconds to play. Cal trying to get fresh defensive linemen in the game. Every time they go with a three man rush, they don't get enough pressure on Dixon. They bring four this time. Dixon over the middle. Colvin's got it at the 20. Cameron Colvin, first down, Oregon. Clock will stop while they move the chains. 39 seconds to play. Van Hoosen and Felder make the stop there as Cal drops into his zone. Dixon looks to the side, gets the play call. Brady Leaf, the backup quarterback, with the six. First and ten at the 20-yard line. Colvin in the slot. The bottom of the screen. Dixon dumps it over to Jonathan Stewart, and Jonathan Stewart drops the ball. That's not bad, though, Dan. No, I don't think so either, Tim. 29 seconds left. He wasn't going to get the first. They have no timeouts. That clock would have continued to move. California now will probably put five men right along the goal line to try to keep Oregon from hitting the ball in the seams. So Oregon may have to catch the ball short and run for it. That's what Dixon had in mind on that play. Dixon shouldn't expect much pressure again. They've got three down. Jonathan Stewart in the backfield. He's blocking. Dixon. Jason Williams at the five. First down, Oregon. Jason Williams with the reception for 15 yards. Clock will stop again with 22 seconds to go. Now, 22 seconds is a lot of time down here. Especially in this offense, you have. The uh, chance now California is going to rest their defense. Tedford calls 
their second time out of the second half. And that gets the Oregon fans to their feet. Yeah. But you're right in this offense. 22 seconds, a long time. You can't find yourself short of the goal line and down without hustling back and getting the play right away and get to the clock play. But you've got the sidelines, you spread the field. This is that kind of offense, Dan. 22 seconds can be an eternity. And don't forget, you've got a running back like Jonathan Stewart who's got the ability to break tackles. So you spread yourself too thin, you might get hit right in the nose by Jonathan Stewart. A lot of options for the Ducks on this next couple of plays. Let's go back to a real controversial play, I think. The 33-yard field goal attempt by Jordan Kay that appeared to go right over the top of the upright, but was ruled to be wide left. Well, Kay thought it was good. Jeff Tepper thought it was good. He went and talked to the official. Bottom line is 31-24 with 22 seconds left. Cal trying to tie it, or Oregon trying to tie it up. First and goal, Stewart in the backfield. Dixon, Colvin. No signal. Colvin, the officials have yet to make a call. It's got to be something. Well, I thought it looked like he reached over the pylon, knocked the pylon down, but did he have possession of the ball? We still do not have a signal. This is unbelievable. How can you review something if they're going to review this if you don't have something to review? Well, they want to see if he fumbled it into the end zone. If he had possession, fumbled it into the end zone. You've got to make a call though before you look at it. Is it a touchback? Ruling on the field is touchback. Here's ball the was touchback. fumbled into and out of bounds. In the end zone. He did have possession. The ruling on the field is being reviewed. He did fumble it into the end zone according to the officials. So take another look. They're saying he made the catch. Dove for the end zone. Fumbled before he crossed the line. Ball went into the end zone. Touchback. And it does look like it was out. Here's another angle. And Marcus Ezef is the man. Ball was out before he crossed the pylon. Now, was it inside the pylon or did it go out of bounds? Looks like it came inside the pylon. Boy, that's close there. Yeah, Touchback. There are, there are a number of things to look at here, but it appeared the ball did go. Well, he made the catch, made a football move. Now the fumble. He was not across the goal line. Touchback. Marcus Ezef, the guy that made the ill-timed personal foul penalty in the first half may have just redeemed himself by stripping the ball from Cameron Colvin. Dan, from this angle, he made the catch, made a football move, took a step, fumbled the ball before he crossed the goal line. The ball was inside the pylon, and that is a touchback. You know, that last look, though, we had from the handheld camera. We go back a couple. It'd be interesting to see where the ball was when it did come out of his hands. I don't think it, it was to the goal line this yet. This shot right here. All right, there's the catch. Turns. All right, now the fumble there. It was not across the goal line. It went inside the pylon. That's a touchback. And the play, the call on the field should stand. Dan Hill is our replay official. We got 16 seconds to go in the ball game, and this review appears to be the correct one if you if the call on the field is that it is a touchback cow ball at the 20-yard line they're just looking now to see if in fact the ball broke the plane and from our replays it doesn't look like it it looked like it was out before it got to the goal line it did go inside the pylon and that's a touchback one more time the ball was out before the goal line so the call on the field should stand last three possessions for the Ducks two interceptions and that fumble. And for a place that was so loud, it now sounds like a library. It's always quiet when you're expecting bad news, I think, my friend. 59,000 on hand. New stadium record. Oregon has won eight of the last ten from Cal. Cal leads the all-time series. And the Bears haven't won here in Austin since 1987. Jack Wood is our referee in communication with our replay official Dan Hill. 
They're taking their good sweet time and well they should. It all hinges on this play, this call, this replay. Such a great drive. Used the clock so well, moved the chains, and was ready to score to tie the game. Hey, you got to feel good for Marcus Ezek because he was that first half. Uh, the reason why Oregon had a seven-point lead. His late hit out of bounds, 15-yard penalty instead of fourth and seven. Then gave him a first down, and they went in and scored. You're right. Look inside the replay booth. Dan Hill standing up with the headset on, communicating with Jack Wood down Here's the, the field. Call. Here's the call. After review, the ruling on this field stands. Touchback. And the Cow Bears are going to win this baby. And it was everything advertised, at least in the second half, huh, partner? I thought it even better. You know, we were talking about a track meet and a high score in the first half was so defensive minded and both teams struggled to find themselves offensively second half we saw the offenses that were advertised it has been spectacular so all that's left is for Nate Longshore to limp out and take a knee with this football as he does now you just hope that he's OK and there's nothing in that surgically reconstructed ankle that's going to cause him to miss any time. First win in Austin Stadium since 1987 for the Cal Bears. Today's Chevy players of the game are Deshaun Jackson of California and Jonathan Stewart of Oregon. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Congratulations for both of those fine players. But the number six Cal Bears looking to move up with the Oklahoma's loss today. Ready. Here we go. And there's so much at stake. You look at this Pac-10. You got USC. They still have to play Cal. They still have to play Oregon. This conference is special. Todd, you're with the winning coach. Coach Tedford has a lot of people who like to say hello to. These are your former Stomper grants. What can you say about this game? What a game. Uh, you know, the players played so hard on both sides. They're, you got to give them credit. They played real hard to come back down the stretch there. Our guys sucked it up, too. It was a great, great football game, great college environment. I'd like to thank our fans for coming out. Great support with our fans. What's the difference between the first half and the second half? Because it looked like your offense was really sluggish there in the first quarter. Well, we, we tried to establish a run, really, in the first half, and, and they were stuffing us. So we needed to open up a little bit, throw some play actions, get the ball down the field. And they threw the ball well. Deshaun made some big plays. End of the game, an injury to Nate Longshore. Can you update us on how that is? Uh, I don't know. It's an and Nate's a tough guy, and, and uh, we just have our fingers crossed. We get a bye next week, so hopefully he'll be fine. Thanks for your time, Coach. Congratulations. Thank Dan? Thank you, Todd. Well, the SC Trojans watching today's game have been put on notice by the California Golden Bears. Once again, our final score is California 31, Oregon 24. Tune in tonight for Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, SC and the Huskies. From Seattle, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So for Tim Brandt and Todd Harris, hope you enjoyed this one, everybody. I'm Dan Fouts. Goodbye. <laughs>